This is my representation of a long toe, low heeled horse. I call it the clown shoes. There's a lot of vertical movement. You see how the knee goes up and the, the feet aren't being stride. There's not, not a long stride going on here. Here, watch this in slow motion. See how vertical that is? You have to get vertical just to get started to get the front foot in front of you. And then the next foot can stride out a little bit more. And as this whole walk continues in slow motion, you're going to see that the stride does go out further. But with each landing, it's on the heel. Now, I know this isn't equivalent to the horse's foot, but the idea is very similar. When a horse with a long toe, low heel is asked to uh, work and there's no pain in the foot, the horse will try to get the foot out there, but there's more vertical downward force landing on the foot, which causes more concussion on the sensitive structures of the hoof, including the navicular bone, navicular bursa, and all the other tendons and ligaments in the caudal heel of the horse. This is why long toe, low heel is so detrimental and causes more lameness in horses than anything that you'll ever see. A few more steps here and we'll go into the other direction. Okay, here we are jogging. You see how the vertical movement occurred? It's more vertical and it's slam, slam, slam. It's straight up and it's almost a hop. You almost have to hop to get the toe out of the way. If you notice as the toe kicks out behind, it actually slips forward because there's so much fulcrum or so much um, rotational torsion on the toe that the tendons are pulling the coffin bone away from the hoof wall. That's another reason why we don't like low heel and long toe. So here's a high heel model of high heel short toe, and this is her walking. And the walk is much different than the jog, and we'll see that as we progress here. But here, everything seems to swing forward. So the swing phase of the gait is longer, and that's always important because there's less time on the concussive forces of the support phase. In addition, the support is more evenly distributed between the toe and the heel. And you can see how her leg just lifts up and, is, and it's a lazy movement forward. Now here we are going to the other side at the walk. And we'll do this in slow motion as well. See how much easier it is for her to just move that foot forward. And again, a high heel, short toe is the same uh, type of physics evolved, involved in the horse's hoof. The horse can move the leg forward easier. There's not as much pull on the deep digital flexion, flexor tendon, so it's not pulling the coffin bone away from the hoof, and you aren't getting the concussive forces on the uh, heel itself. Now here she is running, and you can see how freely that swing is. Here it is in slow motion, and it's just the first step out is long, and she just keeps moving that foot out. This is that extended um, trot that you like to see where the toe is landing way out there. And you can see the foot floats behind. See it float right there? It just floats, just like that. Now we're gonna do real time to the right here. And she's doing what I call daisy cutting. The toes aren't getting much more than an inch or so off the ground. Look at that, it goes straight out. There's no vertical movement. Just, it comes right out because she doesn't have to worry about lifting the foot up and getting the toe out of the way. Look how low the toe is to the ground as she moves forward. And it's landing on the toe. She's able to move her body forward over it. And as she gets toward the end here, she's really striding out. See that floating of the feet? 